up, guys? So this podcast and YouTube video that we're doing, we wanted to start doing every week because we get a lot of people every week asking us all these questions, and we were like, you know, this would be a great way for us to interact a little bit with you. You guys can ask us questions throughout the week for this podcast, and we'll just do it weekly. A little like, AMA. Little, yeah. little AUA. Ask yeah. us anything. Ask us anything. And we'll try to we'll try to bring like, you know, the the best questions that we can. It doesn't mean that your question wasn't good. We're yeah. just trying to get Try to keep it under the same theme. Yeah. We don't want to get know? too crazy with the amount of time we're spending on this. We just want it to be like every week we're gonna answer some of your questions. For and, sure. You and know. those on the YouTube channel, we are under a little bit of a different uh, arena right now. We have right. construction in the studio. Yeah, we have some construction so. in the studio. Uh, hopefully it's done soon. Yep, <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> um, okay, so the first question that I thought was really interesting, and I wanted to ask you about it. Yeah. Bring your girlfriend hunting, man? Is well, that a good or a bad a idea? I don't have a at yes. this point in time. Have you ever, or what do you think about Single it? Single and ready to mingle, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. But I, I have brought women um, of interest mm -hmm. at certain times hunting. Sure. Um, um, yeah, more often than not, I haven't, but you know, so no, but bringing girlfriend hunting, um, I like, honestly, I think, and I, th Joey was talking about this today on his, uh, story. And so I'm, I'm taking a little bit from him of what he was saying, but, um, girls coming hunting, I think is completely normal and should be a normal thing. And cause I thoroughly enjoy their company in the blind and, um, I'm, you know, anything I say in the blind, regardless is, you know, can be said in front of guy, girl, whatever. And sure. so I'm not I, like, as far as attitudes goes, Oh, it's time with the boys. Like mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I, eh, you know, it's whatever. Like I, I'm not really like, sure. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But like, you know, bringing your girlfriend hunting, I think that a lot of guys look at that as, um, like it's their time to get away and they're like, they don't want to bring them. And then you get the camp. That's so like, they don't want to spend any time without their girlfriend. Well, so they want to bring them. Yeah. So you essentially those, like the two camps and whatnot. And, um, and I guess like, I'm, I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle of just like, yeah, like if she enjoys it, absolutely. But if she's going to like complain about, you know, the weather or complain about like getting cold or whatever, it's just like, well, like, like the same thing and that's fine. Like you can go do your thing and whatever. Like maybe you guys have your own hunting time later, but um, I definitely think that uh, girls can hold their own. You oh know? yeah, no, I hundred percent agree. Yeah, I and I fall somewhere in the middle. You know, like I'm not in either camp, and I actually think a lot of guys probably realistically do. Yeah, because it's more like if your wife or your girlfriend or whoever asks you if they can come, mm -hmm. you know, then I guess you have to decide if you're either like, sure, you can come, I don't care at all, or you're in the camp of like, no. That's my time, <laughs> yeah. you know, which I don't really get that. Like, that's not, right. that's not my gig. You know, I've definitely hunted with tons of friends who have brought their girlfriend or, you know, in general, just hunted, hunted with women. Would you bring Annie? If she wanted to go? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I would take her out there. Yeah. How do you think it would go? I don't think she'd have fun. <laughs> so, and like, that's the thing is like, you know, my wife, she's a cabin girl, not a tent girl. Okay. Okay. So like. That's not that's not her gig, man. Yeah. And she knows that. You know, my wife is an independent, uh, confident person. Yeah. Right? So like she like she would never ask me to come hunting with me. Yep. Because she knows she wouldn't enjoy it. Like she doesn't like, you know, getting super cold and laying in the dirt and waiting on a hobby that she doesn't have interest in. Yep. Like that's not you know, we connect on other levels. We have our own stuff that we're interested in together. Like she it's not like she needs that to yep. So, and I, I, think I don't have a problem with it at all. If, if we're going down the route of giving advice, you know, in this arena, I would say ask the people that you're with, definitely. Um, because some guys do have very heavy opinions about this. Well, here's the thing. Also, read the people you're hunting with. Yeah. Okay? Because, like, some guys, and I, I'm not trying to be a dick, but, like, man, I don't know if I bring my wife hunting with some dudes. With some of the guys that you go hunting with? I don't I don't want to say like that I go hunting with. Okay. But like I've been hunting with guys where I'm like, that's a dude like I wouldn't necessarily be like amped to like go hunting <laughs> with my wife with, you know? Yeah. Just because like, yeah, the to conversation topics they bring up or whatever. But I don't know. Most of the guys that I hunt with are like really normal or like just so concerned about hunting in general that it's not like they're yeah. like out there to talk about their pecker or something weird. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I've had all ranges of, of girls that, you know, 
that would have zero interest. Like, yeah. don't even want me. Like, they're like, bring home the meat. That's all I want to see. And then there's the other end that like would get pissed if I didn't bring them if you know when I went. So I've I've covered yeah, the entire spectrum. <laughs> yeah, and, I haven't. And you know, and I've like, found in that what the ones that want to come is talking to the guys beforehand, saying like, hey, you know, like with without talking to her, be like before even inviting her, just say like, hey, like would you guys mind if I brought my girlfriend? And then if they're like, yeah, sure, yeah, it's totally applicable. We got enough room here for for sure. And then you go and invite her. Yeah. And then when she doesn't come, it's yeah. just like, oh, yeah, no, she couldn't come. Yeah, don't pigeonhole yourself. Yeah. Don't be like, hey, do you want to come this weekend? I'll see if you can. Yeah. You know, and then the guy's like, dude, you know, because here's the thing, too, though. You wouldn't just bring a buddy. Yeah. Right? Like, you would always ask, if especially if it's not your field or, you know, not your yep. hunt. I'm not just going to show up when they think it's just me coming with, like, one of my buds. Right. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's true. That's I would always point. ask anyway. So obviously you should ask if it's not your field. If it yeah. is your field, then you're going to tell the guys, hey, by the way, my wife, my girlfriend's coming with, just giving you guys a heads up, I, you know, if you have to. Yeah. But, so, you know, we, um, know. so next question that we had on the list, a lot of questions really had to do with weather. Yeah. And so talking to you about, um, or l- give me your input on uh, really reading the weather, reading the cold fronts and, and whatever that's coming through, how that affects the migration, uh, really your strategies behind that. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Well, um, obviously you do want to watch the weather and it's a very tricky, fickle, um, you know, thing because you can think one thing and then it turns out that you're completely wrong. Um, Joey and I went, just like I was talking about in our longer podcast, we went hunting last weekend. We had a 10 mile an hour wind. The temperatures got a little bit colder. I thought maybe they would go feed a little earlier than they have been. They didn't. Um, you know, okay, like let's talk about this because a lot of people asked about like migrators. Yep. So you're looking for a wind that is conducive to migration, right? Okay. So, you know, if you get north winds, birds are going to be migrating, you know, more than they would if you have a west wind or a south wind or whatever. You know, just flying, flying with wind is going to make it easier for them. Uh, you want wind when you're hunting because it makes it easier for birds to land. So if you have like a really calm day, you know, if it's zero degree or if, uh, if it's zero mile per hour winds, those birds are going to be a lot more fickle. They're going to circle and circle and look because not landing into wind makes it a lot harder for them to land. You know, because yep. birds land into the wind. They use the wind to help slow them down when they're coming into the ground so it's easier for them to land. So wind is definitely a big factor. So you want the wind at your backs or at the very least off your shoulder, um, kind of cornering to you, you know, a little bit. That's going to be, a you know, a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say temperature is definitely a big thing, and it sort of depends on the time of the year. You know, like later in the year, if it's warmer, which it has been in December this year for us, then the geese... You know, they don't feel like they have to migrate. You're not seeing as many numbers come in. Um, You know, all in all, crappier goose hunting. If it's a little bit colder, then better. But you also don't want it to be like negative 10 where they're just, they're not going to stop. They're just going to fly on through, you know, so you kind of need those perfect things. Um, So when you check weather, do you look at weather that's like north of us? Or yeah, I do a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I check um, kind of northern northern Minnesota. um, Okay. If we're I, I in the know. cities, to give people perspective. Yeah, if we're in the cities, I'm the checking cities. like Aiken, Bemidji. Okay, you know, so a couple hours yeah, north. Yeah, a couple hours north, maybe four hours north max. I'm not really looking too much further than that. Um, I will zoom out sometimes and see if that front that's coming through is going to run through Canada if it's earlier in the year. Okay. And because that means, you know, if they get frozen up or locked up in Canada, then more birds are going to migrate down. Mm-hmm. So that's definitely a big thing. Um yeah, I don't know. Those are a few of the things, I think. Okay. Um, I guess, yeah, read the weather. The fronts definitely do matter. If it's a full moon, you're screwed. <laughs> you know, I will just say that from personal experience. When it's hey, full that's moon, when they they'll g- feed at night, dude. That's um, when it's good for deer hunting, so. Right. You can just go deer hunting. Yeah, so you can just go deer hunting. I, I wouldn't even bother waterfall hunting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just, yeah, those are some Those are some of the things, you know. Um, I definitely think that, that that affects it. Okay. What do we got next? Obviously, everyone knows that. Um, So, okay. Speaking of that crappy weather, good weather, that kind of relates to another topic that we got asked about, and that would be your favorite waterfowl products that you can, that you just can't live without and why. Okay. So, what what are some of your favorite waterfowl products for hunting? 
Yeah, for me personally, I wouldn't call it a waterfowl product or a hunting product, but it's my GoPro camera. I just can't hunt without that. Sure. Personally, but okay. um, no, um, I I definitely like to be warm when it comes to my hands and feet, and so something and and my neck. So my neck gaiter is probably what I would start with. How many days a year do you hunt? I need to count, dude. I really need yeah, to count. I need to know. I need to count. Because I I want and like it it's it's well over a hundred right I think so dude oh yeah like, it's gotta be. yeah I I'm gonna count I, I will count tonight I will get it to you I will okay. I'll let you know so the, my point in that question is like you run the gamut yes on some of your stuff yeah so like what what actually works like just give us like some specific products that you're like oh man so I have those um I forgot what type of um fabric they are but the gloves uh they're the sitka gloves and then basically a merino glove liner. yeah yeah mer- yep yep the gl- glove so. liner and then i put that i put a wool uh fingerless glove over top of that it is perfect for what i do because it keeps the tips um of your finger warm kind of um but the the core of your hand you could just pull your hand in and um have do do it that way but you have you know full finger dexterity. yep and those have is it an E tip? E tip. No. Well, they technically do, but they've warmed down enough so that I can't sure. use it. So yeah, that does. But for you, that would be anymore. ideal. Yes, that but would like be, a merino yep. glove liner with an E tip would be like yep. the deal for you. But yeah, the uh, neck gaiter, the um, having a neck gaiter, a nice thick neck gaiter, that is fantastic, um, just for everything when it comes to the cold weather. Um, and then some kind of, for waterfowl hunting especially, something that's waterproof with a hood that goes over top. Can you give me like a specific product? Uh, like, like the, the Filson. Like the Skagit jacket? Yep. Yeah, like that, that okay. jacket that's waterproof um, going over top. You know, I, and hood is huge. I've found this, like this last winter when I was doing a lot of ice fishing, I found that having just a hoodie underneath whatever jacket that goes up over, ne- over top of like a hat is my favorite way to like stay warm like more than a hat because then your neck gets cold like more than a hat and a gator i just like to have just a, a cap with a hoodie over top of it that's interesting yeah, yeah isn't that weird? Of, it is kind of weird i love it because i like the hood too but i always wear a beanie i feel so, so comfy. i go beanie and hood yeah well and you're outside more than i am when it comes to like work you yeah. know like and all that stuff but i i don't know why i love it but i just do feel so comfy yeah um anyway um other products um, I really, really like the sound gear, having the sound gear by, oh, especially yeah. because I spend time in front of the muzzle or like where you can get muzzle blasted, you know, when yep. people are shooting over you. Um, so that, that stuff is like, that's always, I'm just thinking what's in my blind bag right now. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Yeah. And then something to sit on that though. That's a big one. Something to sit yeah. on that, that gets separates you from the ground. If you're sitting on like a hill for elk hunting or deer hunting, or if you're in like a swamp, instead of standing the whole time, you got a swamp seat. Yeah. yeah so. That makes a big difference. Anyway, um, next no, question. So I want yeah, to yeah, give a few of my favorite products. Yes, please tell me. Okay. All right. So, like, I, I hate big layout blinds. Okay. I hate them. Like, tall, okay. wide. Yeah, like, wide, tall, like, not packable. Yeah. Like, I hate that. Okay. Okay. So, like, one of my favorite waterfall products, which I definitely could not live without because I just keep it in my truck. Basically, then if I get asked to go hunting or I can hunt in the afternoon, anything like that, I I keep a running gun layout blind. Yep. So like the Lucky Duck layout blind, that's like perfect. It's literally just like a cloth thing that comes over you and it's got a, a backrest and a little butt rest in it. Yep. That is money. I I would highly recommend, no matter who you are, have a running gun layout blind. They are the shit, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Are they a little colder? Yes. Are they a little more uncomfortable? Yes, but yep. I don't know. Links I, in the I description. Kit.co slash Midwest Flyways. Yep, that's one of my favorite right things. Um, I definitely think a good beanie. You know, like I wear I wear a beanie a lot of the year. Yeah. So like I right now I've been wearing that Filson watch cap. Mm-hmm. I like that one because I can fold it, right, and have double warmth on the ears, and then I can go single layer too okay. without it being like super long and baggy and weird. Yeah. Um. So when it's not quite as as hot out or or cold out, I mean. Yeah, so, I don't wear a ton of beanies, so I can't relate. Right. But. Um. Yeah, and then for me, I think uh, it's all about like in interior layers, mm-hmm. right? So like, I don't believe in like Under Armour. I don't know. Like when I when I played football, yeah. dude, like Under Armour made me colder. 
Really? I'm just going to throw that out there. I, I don't know, man. Like, and there's been a bunch of people that have like written articles about like how Under Armour, even like the heat gear. Yeah. It actually does not retain warmth in any way. Like it's not warmer for you. Interesting. Um, so I actually just wear like, uh, like a classic, you know, like long johns. Yeah. 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 Like from back in the day, like the for waffle sure. knit pattern like oh, yeah. or whatever. I wear one every time I hunt. Yeah. So yeah, like my classic layer up would be like that. And then either like a Filson quarter zip, which is a polar tech. So okay. it's like a synthetic fleece yep. or a flannel. Okay. And then I go vest and then I go like a insulating jacket layer and then my outer layer. Okay. So that's like if it's a really crappy situation. Right. Right. I don't know. Huh. A vest for me is crucial. So like I love my, my Filson ultralight vest. Yep. That's I mean, any type of like, you know, vest. Yeah. Like a lighter vest. I'm not a big puffy vest guy. So that's not really my gig, but that ultralight vest is really thin. Um, hmm. And before that, I really liked that, like the the Sitka Dakota vest that I had. Yeah. I liked that a lot. So I've, anything kind of. I've like never that. had a hunting vest. I have like a vest that just has our logo on it. But I've never had a hunting vest. Mm. So we'll have to work on that. Yeah, I I would like one. Yeah. Uh, last thing that I definitely feel like one of my favorite waterfall products that I use all the time, Onyx. Oh, that's Dude, that's a good that's good input. That is so worth the money. Yeah. Especially if you're like gonna hunt one state mostly, a thirty dollar membership a year. Yeah. For the one state, dude. If you scout a lot and you ask for permission a lot, man, yeah. It makes life so that's a good much point. easier. So that's solid. That being said. Cool. Um yeah, so the next one that I got for us is uh getting permission. So that actually relates to my Onyx product. Yeah. <laughs> right? So that kind of works. Uh, yeah. So getting permission. Yeah. So how do you um, get permission? What's some strategies? What's a good, you know, uh, what do you just show up there with cookies and say, Hey, can I hunt your field? Well, I'm going to, I'll start with a little bit, but I know you have a lot of experience with this too. Yeah. Um, so everyone kind of has their tactic. And I think what I would say is find out what you're good at, right? Like me, yep. I'm a schmoozer. What do you have to offer? Right. So like, I'm a great, I'm a great salesman. Yeah. You know, um, I think a big thing about getting permission, don't sugarcoat bullshit, mm -hmm. right? Like these guys are busy. They have lives. They own this property and they know it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Like they, you are not the first guy to ask for permission. Yep. So don't sugarcoat it. Don't bullshit it. I just try to be as straightforward as I possibly can. You know, yep. I go up there and I say something like, Hey, my name is Cal Ness. I live in, you know, this town and I'm here today because I noticed you have some birds in your field. I was wondering if you'd give me and a couple buddies permission to hunt it this weekend. And I try to say one thing I've started doing now is saying when I'm going to hunt it. Yeah. Not just leaving it so open ended. Yeah. Right. Cause like if you do it once and it goes well and you clean up really good and you thank them for letting you come out, yep. they're probably going to let you come out again. Yeah. So I don't try, I try not to say like, can I just, do I have permission to just hunt it? Yeah. You know, I say like, can I hunt it on Saturday with my friends? Yep. You know, and then that also gives them the right to be like, well, yeah, but later in the year, my, my nephew hunts it. So Saturday is yep. fine. But you know, after that, you'd have to talk to me first Yeah, and you're like, that's totally fine. So I don't know. I try to do that and just be really straightforward about it. Um, I know that another tactic you could use, I'm a carpenter. Yep. So, you know, I can say, Hey, I'm a carpenter. If you need any small, you know, odds and ends fixed up around here, I'm happy to help you do that. And that's more of like, if I get into a relationship where it's like, right. Hey, you know, would you let me hunt this for the year? And I want to help you out in, in turn. Yep. Um, some guys like to give goose meat out or, or duck meat, whatever. I think the biggest thing there is when you're done with that conversation and leaving, you ask, what can I do for you? You know, like mm -hmm. do you want goose meat? Cause some people hate goose meat, you know, right. Do you want, do you want this? Do you want that? And what do you have to offer? Man. And a lot of guys, I'll tell you what, a big one I get told a lot is just bring me a 12 pack of beer. Yeah. You know, like that's, and that's a simple gesture, man. What is that? 10 bucks? Yeah. You know, go and pick up a 12 pack of bush light or whatever, right. Whatever beer and just bring them a 12 pack. Yep. That's true. You know, that just puts, puts beers in their fridge for the next couple of weeks and yeah. that'll make them happy. What do you, what have so you So I done? have a little bit of a different Yeah, because your skill set's totally different. Yeah. So my strategy that I actually used in Indiana, I ended up getting permission, but never needed to use it um, because I've, you know, was with other people when I needed to hunt or was hunting um, was I would take a drone shot of the plea people's house. Oh. And so and when and then I would either be able to go up there with my iPad and say, "Hey, I took this. I was flying around. I saw this is a good video or a good shot. Took it. Do you would you like it?" 
Oh, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. You need us to, you know, what are you looking for money? Or, no, 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 not at all. I would, I would love to hunt your property if that's okay. But, um, this is just, you know, pro bono for free, whatever you guys want. Um, and then you leave it at that. And then, sure. you, then the conversation goes from there. Yeah. And when I was scouting, it was more for deer because, you know, I didn't have all the decoys and everything down in Indiana to, to do a lot of waterfowl and there wasn't a lot of waterfowl down there. Right. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, and it was, it, it worked, man. Yeah, dude, that's actually a really cool idea because I've seen a lot too, like a lot of my buddies and friends who, you know, from farming families or farms that I've been on, they have like a cool photo. And like back in the day it used to get done, like a guy would take a helicopter out and like, yep. drive, you know, fly around and take photos of all the farms and then pass those out or whatever. More often than not, that yeah. is what my photo is replacing. Yeah, totally. And usually it goes right next to them as like. Then you know, and now, two thousand, and yeah. then two thousand sixteen, totally, or that's whenever a sweet there. idea. Yeah. So you take the photo before you actually. Yeah. Yeah. So because you could be like, yeah, I was just I'm flying my drone in this area, you know, already, yep. and so I just I happened I to zipped pull over, this, took your picture. Yeah, yeah, I happened to pull this photo off my file, and because if you walk you up there with it. an iPad and you're showing it, if you can yeah. print it, it's even better. But if you walk up there with an iPad and you're showing it, like that's the first thing that they look at. It's like, whoa, look at that, you know, like yeah. they recognize our house. They you know, built it, worked on it, whatever. Yeah. So. That's really cool, man. That's a yeah. definitely a good idea. And uh, well, I'll tell you this too. Now, you know, before we close this up, another way that Joey has gotten a lot of permission is, is pigeon, hunting. pigeon hunting. Yeah. We did, we did a video about it. Yeah. Make sure you go on um, our YouTube channel, take a look at that. And, uh, but yeah, doing pigeon hunting, getting rid of their pesky, pesky rodents or whatever. And yeah developing a relationship that way. Yeah, because a lot of farmers don't want the pigeons, and so if you just go there kind of in the off-season and say, is it all right if I shoot some pigeons? Essentially, it's just any way to start a relationship with them that is, you know, so they know you. Yep. Right? So, or at least they have the idea of who you are. That makes it a lot easier. So, we're going to do this weekly, guys. Like we said, there's so many questions coming at us, so leave us a message, you know, send a comment on here. Um, hit us up on Instagram and let us know what you have a question about for the next week and we will see you soon.